In today's Leeds news, Maresca on Leeds clash, Leeds eyes Scottish under 21, and Kamara talks up Gruev. Morning folks, Jay here on Friday 23rd of February with your Leeds United News. Match day, Leeds versus Leicester tonight at Elland Road. Big game for Leeds, big game for Leicester. Although if you listen to their manager, apparently not so. We're going to get into that a little bit. He's made some comments about Leeds United. Also Leeds looking at dipping back into the Scottish youth market as well for some players. And Glenn Kamara has been speaking up Ilya Groove leading into tonight's clash. Quick update for you as well. There is a match preview of sorts over on Not Another Leeds podcast tonight at 7 o'clock. I'll be there with the lads leading up to the match tonight. You can check that out if you want to. It'll be linked in the community tab as well if you want to come and watch that. It's on Twitter as well. Go and check that out. Uh, we'll start off, we'll get into this, and we'll start off with Enzo Maresca's press conference yesterday and some comments that he's made about Leeds. Those on Twitter may have seen some of the comments last night. There are some extended versions of this as well, and we'll get into that now. Enzo Maresca may have done Leeds United's team talk for them leading into tonight's game. Leeds were 17 points behind Leicester on January 12th, and if Leeds can win tonight against Leicester, the gap will be down to six in just over a month between the two time periods. Maresca is, isn't feeling the heat and apparently he believes that Leeds are. Leeds on an eight-game winning streak and unbeaten Nelland Road so far this year. But Maresca has had the following to say about the clash. It's a huge game for them. For us, it's just one more game. I think it's an important game, but every time we win a game, we move close to our target. But if it doesn't happen, we keep going. Maresca went on to say, it's a huge game, but for them more. Because they're nine points behind us. If we were nine points behind them, yes, it's a game that we would have to win. Daniel Farka has talked about this all season, has talked about it in a very different term, a far more modest term than Maresca tends to talk about things. Farka has said all season the goal is promotion, end of story. And this week in his press conference, he said that it's nice to win a title, but if you win the title, come second or win the playoffs, the goal and what the reward is still the same thing. Yeah, you don't pick up a shiny trophy, but the goal is to get back to the Premier League. Leeds had their moment a couple of years ago. It's about getting back to the Premier Division and that's what Leeds are focusing on. Maresca seems to be focusing very much on the title as opposed to just getting promoted. So uh, it's an interesting one for me. That's a um, comments that can come back to haunt you in those kind of moments as well. I don't think the Leicester, some of the Leicester fans would like hearing Maresca talking about that. Some will. Some will love it. I think others will be a little bit nervy about that as well. This is It is a big game for both sides. For both sides. Because if Leeds beat Leicester, there's blood in the water. You know, they have to go and play Southampton as well this season as well. It will be a tough game. There are games coming up for Leicester where if they start to dip, if any kind of dip in form at this point could see them lose their top spot and they don't want to do that. They've been excellent all season. Leicester have been very, very good. You can't take that away from them. They've been very good all season. Uh, Leeds will want to maintain that home record that we've had all season and try and level the all-time Leeds winning record, which is nine games that was set in 1931. So Leeds will want to try and beat that if they can as well. Uh, moving on, let's talk about some potential underage signings. We keep we talked yesterday about a new academy director coming in in Diggle. There's been a big revamp going on behind the scenes. We've seen a lot of players who are aging out of the under-21 system leave Leeds over the last couple of weeks. Leeds are now looking at starting to bring players back into that system and revamp it going into next season. According to the daily record up in Scotland, Leeds are among a crop of English clubs who are interested in young Kalmarnock striker Bobby Wales, who's currently on loan at Alloa. Um, Ipswich Stoke are also said to be amongst the clubs keeping an eye on the player. Leeds have sent scouts to watch him as well. He's been really good. He's got seven goals in his last eight games and he's actually picked up 10 appearances for Kamarnock's first team at the age of 18. He's six foot two as well, so he's not a small man by any means at all. Leeds have dipped into the youth market in Scotland before this season. They brought in Rory Mahady, they brought in Josh McDonald, they brought in Louis Peary, all of whom seem to be showing really good progress on the under-18s side as well and dipping into the 21s from time to time there. Wales' contract is up in the summer, so a form of compensation would need to be paid should the player leave the club in the summer and move down south to either Leeds or if it's Stoke, whoever club gets him. Um, another good young striker Leeds are keeping an eye on. Never guaranteed that the young players will, will actually turn into fully-fledged players uh, with the senior side, but Leeds seem to be using the Scottish market quite well and picking up some really, really good players. Anyone who saw the under-18s FAU Cup clash a couple of weeks ago against Sheffield United will see how good Louis Perry and Josh McDonald and Rory Mahady in goal specifically have been. Rory Mahady looks like a cracking young goalkeeper. So there's some really good, interesting players there. We will be doing some form of a youth academy look with Jerry McDermott during the international break. I spoke to Jerry last well, this week about coming on, so Jerry's keen to do that as well. So that will happen during the international break and get some additional content out while Leeds are um, on hiatus. 
And then finally today, short one, we're going to talk about Glen Kamara and Ilya Gruve's partnership leading into the game tonight. Glen Kamara has been talking it up. Ilya Gruve has had to be very patient this year and wait for his time. And he's gone about it in an incredibly professional manner. No sulking, no comments in the press, nothing at all. He's just waited and bided his time. Glen Kamara and Gruve have formed a fantastic partnership in the middle of that Leeds United side. And now Glen Kamara speaking to the 72 has been talking up Gruve. And what he said is the following. He's a really good player. He's worked hard. In the beginning, he wasn't playing much, but he's really done well since he's come in and he's really proven that he is a good footballer. That partnership has seen Leeds concede one goal since the turn of the year and be very important in tonight's match, but also very important in the running. It shows the depth and squad that Leeds have right now that Pascal Stroke probably won't walk back into this team after the international break when he does come back because the two guys in midfield have been doing so well. Who do you drop? I don't think you should drop anybody. You can't change a winning team. I love Pascal. I think he's great. He's been excellent this season for us. And I don't forget the work he's done in the first half of the season for Leeds where he was really, really good. But Daniel Farke doesn't change a winning team. So if Leeds keep winning and no one gets injured, this team will be very hard to break. Dan James in the same boat as well. Dan James isn't going to push his way back into the team with the form that Willie Nyonto's in at the moment. So they're all going to have to wait uh, patiently for their moments. But it does show the depth of squad and it does mean that Leeds have got options off the bench as well as and when they need them. It's going to be important coming into the run and there will be niggles, there will be knocks picked up between now and the end of the season. There's 13 games left after tonight. We really aren't running. 10 weeks, the season will be over. So it is a strong run in with a good squad there if we can keep them all fit and healthy. And hopefully we get Patrick Bamford back for tonight's game as well. The form that he's been on again since the turn of the year. And for me, looking at the Plymouth game at the weekend last week, I thought we missed him. I thought we definitely missed his foot, him as a focal point. And Georgie Rutter missed him as having somebody, a very experienced player, speak to him as well. So we forget how young Joel Pirro is at 24 years of age. You know, so Pat Bamford, far more experience, and in certain games this year, will be a big, big help for Leeds, especially given the form he's been in recently. Uh, that's going to be it for me today, folks. Fingers crossed for three points tonight. I'll be over on Not Another Leeds podcast at seven o'clock tonight. If you want to go check that out, you can. Uh, otherwise, I will see you back here Monday morning to digest whatever happens tonight. Have a great weekend. Fingers crossed for three points, and I'll talk to you then. See ya. Bye.